Um, and I'm going to sit Hope down. So I brought Oscar as a, kind of my, like, um, well, we have an education bunny at our place. Her name is Bianca. Uh, she didn't quite fit in my suitcase, so I had to bring Oscar. And, uh, you know, but we use a, a lot of, uh, lot of props when we talk to people. And uh, at the last conference, one of the um, really well-received classes was on dealing with aggressive rabbits and, and how to work with that. And so it was a request to have that, uh, that type of information repeated. So we're trying to actually go at it from a little bit different perspective and start out with, uh, you know, with the, this young, uh, preventing the aggressive rabbit before we actually get to responding to the aggressive rabbit. Because if we can prevent it, you know, we've already, you know, taken care of that particular issue. And there's so many different things, so many aspects about that, that that's just why we're trying to touch base on this. Now, I'm preaching to the choir, so I may be going kind of quickly to this, because I'm expecting you to, you already can catch on. But when you're talking to your adopters, a lot of this information can really, really help them. Uh, you're creating a relationship with them, and although, just as uh, has been previously said, if you have an adopter who's had 10 bunnies, okay, a lot of times there's a lot of information you can skip, or you can touch base with them during a conversation, and you already catch on what they already know, okay? And then there's others that, you know, like I had a gentleman, he said, well, I've had, I've had rabbits for 21 years, and I didn't know half of what you told me because all this time he'd been doing a lot of it wrong. And he was actually very grateful for the information. And so that's one of the things that we're really trying to do. And when people ask you questions, because you're the go-to, a lot of times you can be walking through some of this stuff. And then again, you become even more of a go-to because these people don't want to give up their bunnies. So they're trying to figure out certain things. And, and that's it. So as we, as we go through, you know, uh, go ahead to the, the next one. Okay, so, you know, and this was a presentation I did uh, the last time too. You have to think like a bunny, okay? You can't think like a human in order to prevent an aggressive rabbit. They have their own ways of doing things. And again, you, you are familiar with a lot of these things. Okay. okay, so most of them, they're not born aggressive. Okay, it's usually a response to behavior. Uh, this could be from fear, it could be environment, it could be pain, okay? Uh, behavior caused by diet. A lot of times people don't realize a diet can affect them. Uh, behavior caused by health uh, or even smell, you know? So, uh, just, so we'll go ahead and we'll go through some of this. Um, we did this at the last one too. We're not going to touch base on, on every little thing. Just that these are all the different parts that people need to think about when they're thinking about a rabbit. Uh, so many times we're just touching upon the physical, uh, sometimes the environmental, but we need to respond to a lot of these things, okay? All right, so, uh, in fact, I just said that, so let's go on to the next slide. All right, environmental, basic things you already know. Their basic needs, your protection from elements, their comfortable living space, uh, healthy food, clean water, freedom from predators and parasitic infections, environmental accommodations for any physical disabilities or illness. Uh, this, in fact, this is the last one here. Keep in mind, somebody might say, you know, well, my rabbit's, you know, is, is, is now getting grouchy when I do this, and it was never like this before. Okay, is your rabbit seven years old? Maybe your rabbit's got arthritis. Maybe he hurts now. Maybe he needs some pain medicine or something to help with the arthritis. So a lot of things, again, just, you know, think, you know, about what the problems might be. Uh, physical, uh, promotion of their, you know, again, these are things we do, the playtime. Uh, exercise, manage, managing the relief, uh, relief of pain, et cetera, like we, you know, I just said. Uh, supporting preventative measures such as regular veterinary examinations and treatment. This again, we've had people, you know, well, my bunny said that, that doesn't want me to touch his ears. Well, have you, you know, have to check for an ear infection? Okay. Again, all, a veterinarian checkup really, really can help. You can pre prevent something from getting out of line and way overboard. You catch it early, and you've not only helped with that uh, you know, issue, but you've also possibly nipped a bad behavior in the bud. Because I've had bunnies that have come in and say they had terrible cases of ear mites. And even though you clear up those ear mites, how long does it take before you're doing this to reach that bunny's head? That bunny's flinching, right? Okay, 
It, they're, they're, they've got this ingrained response because they've had those ear mites for so long that it, it, they are expecting it to hurt. So it takes quite a while. You know, so again, the sooner you can eliminate an issue, the, the better off you are. Uh, social, philanthropic, interaction with other sentient beings. That bunny out in the hutch, how often does he interact with anything, okay? Not to mention he's actually scared out there. Uh, ability to take up care of others of the same species or a different species or be to caretaking, you know. Um, but I had that backwards there. Anyway, a lot of them, again, a, a friend, uh, even if a lot of times it could be a cat, a dog in the family, uh, the family themselves, any of this interaction, the commotion, but when they're left alone, so often they develop, you know, an antisocial attitude, you know, because now they don't know really what to expect from you. Uh, the intellectual, occupational, okay, stimulation, challenge, motivation, providing the opportunity for a rabbit to complete a bunny job. How many of you have bunnies who like to have a blanket and burrow under there? Spend lots of time under there, don't they? They love it, okay? Uh, so giving them things that they can do, you know, uh, somebody said to you, well, you take a, uh, a stuffed cardboard box, fill it up with paper, let them empty it, okay? They're having themselves a great time. It's a big mess for you, but they're having themselves a blast. Okay, uh, emotional compromises, recognizing acceptance of all the emotions we see in our rabbit companions display, joy, contentment, anticipation. All of these things, we need to see those things, you know, happening with our bunnies versus you know, fear or aggression or anxiety. So we're, those are the emotions we're trying to avoid. So when you're you know, uh, watching your animal's reactions to things, you're able to avoid some of the things that you now know causes a problem. You know, if the rabbit really, really hates your doorbell, well, maybe you don't want him to have him so close that that can affect him. Okay. All right, so understanding the rabbit in order to understand it better, let's look at uh, two other more common companion animals. And I find this ha really helps a lot with, uh, with our adopters, simply because so many people are familiar with cats and dogs. And there's actually a reason for that, okay? Uh, our dogs go back to caveman days with us. We have literally been selectively breeding them as man's companion for over 40,000 years, okay? And yet, we've never eliminated all of their hereditary behaviors. Okay? They still circle several times before they lay down. They're still pack animals. They still sniff everything, even when you don't want them to. Okay. So, but this is a dog, okay? And you just accept it. It's a dog. You know, our cats, okay? Cats were domesticated more than six, seven thousand years ago. By the time you get to ancient Egypt, you find cats that have been mummified in tombs with their owners. Okay? Must have been a pretty beloved pet because that's a pretty expensive thing to do at that time. But when you kind of, you know, fast, uh, you know, uh, forward to now, we find cats that are in feral cat colonies. We find cats that hunt for mice in barns. I'm not advocating that. It's not a particularly great lifestyle for them. But those hereditary behaviors are still there, okay? We have not eliminated them. But when it comes to the bunny, okay, a lot of people expect them to have no hereditary behaviors whatsoever. They expect them to be a little stuffed toy whose nose wiggles, right? I can just pick this bunny up, do whatever I want with it, let the kids play with it. You know, their expectations a lot of times are way out of bounds, and that's where some of this, you know, we forget that they're prey animals, and we you know, forget a lot of things. Okay, here we go. They have found rabbit bones that are over 53 million years old, okay? They go back a long, long ways, okay? So those behaviors are going to be extraordinarily, you know, in, uh, in, in them. And yet when we go, you know, forward from there, when they were domesticated, it really wasn't until, you know, between 700 and 1400 years ago. They haven't been domesticated that long. And when they were domesticated, it wasn't a main man's companion either, okay? So now we have, you know, issues that, you know, people again are expecting this to, this little, you know, animal to be like, again, this, this little stuffed toy. Um, I'm going to go through a little thing here about uh, dogs because, again, people, uh, they do certain things because of the way we've been brought up around dogs and cats. 
So what's the first thing somebody does to a strange dog? Here, smell my hand, I'm a friend. Okay, wrong, okay. All right, so we have, and this it all correlates, we have something like five million receptors in our noses, okay? Rabbits have a hundred million receptors in their noses. They have a very, very strong sense of smell. But a dog has over 200 million. That's why they can track and hunt, search and rescue, and all those kind of good things. Okay, so they don't need to come anywhere near you to smell you, okay? They can, you can be across the yard and they can smell you. So what you are really doing is you are mimicking other dog behavior. What are you mimicking? Here's my throat, here's my belly, it's lower than your head. Please don't bite me, I'm not a threat to you. That's what you just said, okay? So, you know, but the problem is everybody wants to go off and do this, all right? So we go on, you know, to the next one. And what happens then with the bunnies, okay? Here, smell my hand, I'm a friend. Bite, okay? All right, yeah, because you just offended that rabbit. Yeah. So again, education with your people and avoiding aggression you know, is one of your primary goals, okay? Now, I've had a lot of people go, oh, my bunny kisses me. Well, you've already established a relationship with your bunny, okay? And they groom you just like they, may, they expect you to groom back. But that strange bunny, that's a whole different story, okay? So they're you know, expecting you know, a grooming, a mutual situation, but when you know, two strange bunnies meet, what happens? You know, and here it is, with, this is the difficult part with the microphone. You kiss my head, no you kiss my head, no you kiss my head. He who's had his lowest is top dog, okay? And people don't understand that because we duck, dogs duck, you know, cats duck, but the bunnies are going, yeah, here, kiss my royal head. So when you put your hand down, you're basically saying, kiss my royal hand, okay? And you, yeah, they're not gonna go for that. Not until they have bonded with you. So people need to understand now this is a direct opposite thing. You're coming to the top of their head where they can see your hand coming, okay? All right, their hereditary background, you know? And again, you're you know, talking to people who really know, should know all of this. All right, so in the wild, the European rabbit lives in vast underground tunnels called warrens. Yeah. Okay, unfortunately, much of what the pet breeder industry has, you know, or what the uh, pet industry has, produces copies of what the breeders do. We've all seen the little cages in the stores. Then people go to the stores, they see these little cages, think that's what they're supposed to get, and then when they have health and behavior problems, now we've got a major problem. Okay. So you have this, you know, and what I normally do when I'm talking to uh, uh, the adopters is simply correlating a lot of things with dogs. If you had a Chihuahua, would you make it live in one of those cages? Oh no, 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 no it's, it's too small. Well, most rabbits are bigger than a Chihuahua, you know, so we wouldn't want a rabbit living in that cage either. Of course, as you can see here, most of the cages are picturing baby bunnies that look like you've got lots of room. You know, uh, you're, you know, would you put your dog or your cat on a wire floor? Well, no, no, it would hurt their feet. You know, well, rabbits, you know, don't even have paw pads like a cat or a dog. You know, those that pain from that wire floor can cause aggression, okay? They, they live in those tunnels. So when you put that bunny in that little cage with that little door, what did you just do? You mimicked putting it in its tunnel. Only now there's no back door, no escape route. And guess what? Their eyes are on the sides of their head, as you know, because they're prey animals, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's chicken, duck, cow, horse, they all have their eyes on the side of their head so they can see predators coming. Only predators can focus, which means you're all predators. So now you're coming up to that little bunny, he's trapped and cornered in a cage, you trigger a fight or flight reflex, you're coming right near their blind, and you're a predator, and they have no way of escaping. So now you have triggered a, like I said, a fight or flight reflex. They cannot flee, they attack. And then we get people calling us, we got this mean rabbit. Okay, those are really, really difficult to you know, deal with because now you've got a whole situation going where you know, they've, been, they've been bitten, they're not happy. They really don't want to hear that they have to buy something different, I already spent money on that cage. And you know, so you're really trying to gently talk people through the issues of why that bunny is you know, the way it is. You go to try to pull that bunny out of that cage. What is that bunny's thought process? I'm going to be captured, killed, and eaten. And it goes ballistic on you. 
had the lady who go, oh, but my cage opens up from the top. I said, great, now you're a hawk. Okay. Stop thinking like a human. You gotta think like a bunny. Okay. So, uh, you know, so we know that those cage, you know, floors obviously are going to cause sore hawks. But what about synthetic carpets? You know, sometimes, you know, even we're giving our bunny lots of exercise, but we need to be checking to see that we aren't causing, you know, some problems, you know, ourselves as well. So, you know, it's just a matter of you know, constantly checking your bunny. You know, uh, you know, is that bunny's ear sensitive? Is the bunny's, you know, uh, like I said, if they're acting funny? Are they not running around as much? Maybe they're developing some, you know, uh, ulcerated heels, et cetera. So just things again, think about looking at the specific behavior of the bunny and trying to identify it and trying to, you know, correct it. Okay, wouldn't we all like to have one of these? Okay, I know my bunny would probably love to have one of these, okay. So, a bunny's home is his castle, but it's also his territory, okay? Go to the next one. Um, and people are going, if I only had that much room for my bunny, you know? And that's true, it really, really would be nice. Most of us don't. You got the lady who goes, I live in a studio apartment. Okay, yes, then, then we, you know, then the, actually the apartment usually becomes the bunny's, uh, you know, playground. And, you know, next one, yeah, okay. The big thing is what we were talking about you know, earlier, the room, making sure as long as the bunny can actually stand up and completely stretch out and move around, as long as they can be comfortable, and that's what you're looking for, if they can be comfortable in the environment that they're in. So they don't have to have this enormous you know, entire room, and we have people who go, oh yes, they have their own bedroom. Okay, that's nice, you know. <laughs> so, but it's, what we're look, what we're looking for is that you know place and place to hide. You know, they're prey animals, so you know they need to be able to get it away. You know, and usually something like a even a cardboard box works great as a as a hideaway for them. Okay, so just you know a simple you know cage setup. You know, again, so be able to move around, stretch out have room for their litter box, their hiding box, their, their food bowl, water bowl, their hay, toys, you know, all of these things so that they can simply be, you know, comfortable. In this case, this is just a simply a, a dog crate, okay? It's a two-door uh, on the side. It's, nice, it's a lot easier to access everything from the side. But you're also, when you're coming into that bunny, you're coming in where your hand is up high. You have room to get in there with that bunny. You're not trying to scoop or drag him out, okay? So the whole idea is that the interaction, besides having the room, there's an easier interaction with that bunny. They do not feel the same entrapment in something like this as that they do in one of those small rabbit cages. Okay, pens, we love pens, okay, because they provide even more room. So if you can do a pen, of course, you know, that's definitely something you wanna promote. Uh, bonded pairs. Less stress, again, something we try to promote constantly. It's just like, you know, if you're at home and you hear, you know, strange noise downstairs, it's scary, okay? Let's just say, uh, okay, I'm home with my husband. We hear the strange noise. Uh, you go check it out. I'll call 911. Okay, so it's still scary, but it's not as scary when you've got a friend. So, yes, we're trying to promote those mind pairs. And, of course, they live in colonies. So again, you're trying to promote those, those issues where the bunny feels the most comfortable. And, you know, and if you, I tell people, well, if you're retired, um, you know, the date, you'll see, uh, work from home, uh, maybe you homeschool, you know, different things like that. You might be able to be that bunny's, that bunny's friend. But if you're gone all day long to work and you're sleeping at night, most of us do, then that bunny is alone a tremendous amount of time. And even when you are home, you may be homework, you know, laundry, dinner, dishes, you know, uh, grocery shopping. How much time are you really, really spending with that bunny? Think about having a friend. If you don't have a lot of time to spend with that bunny, seriously consider having a friend for that bunny. Okay, uh, so, you know, in fact, some of this stuff we've already, you know, you know gone over. Uh, we do want them outside of their, you know, exercise time outside of their cage. Uh, new toys, you know, and I noticed, you know, even the San Diego, if you went over there and did some shopping, they promote a lot of this too because it's stimulating that bunny's mind really, really does help them. Um, giving them, what's it, a box or a paper bag, you know, something that's uh, filled with, 
anything that they can do that helps them do some normal things, the uh, forage games, the uh, clicker training, all of that's really, really good. Okay, next. Okay, not sure where that's going to go. Um, okay, then again, this is just exactly what we're doing, mental stimulation, giving them things where they can play with, chew on, dig, you know, all of this stuff, because a bored bunny, for one thing, is not a happy bunny. And if you think about it, if we're sitting there twiddling our thumbs and have absolutely nothing to do, we're not very pleasant either because we're grumpy, we're not happy. You know, make sure that the bunny's happy too. Okay, improper handling. All right, we get a lot of this, you know. And, you know, because that also goes into a crabby bunny sometimes. All right, go ahead. All right, and we've seen some of these pictures already before, okay? A lot of you have already responded to the, one of this, this county fair uh, situation. But, you know, one of our um, very, very devoted volunteers has uh, told me, you know, one of her, the most traumatic moments of her entire life was being five years old and given a baby bunny for Christmas, or for, uh, actually for Easter. She said, I love that bunny! She killed it right in her hand. She broke his back, okay? No supervision, okay? You can't do that. You know, again, this is things that people simply need to understand. This is a very fragile animal. You don't give it to a child without supervision. Okay? They need to be taught. It doesn't mean that that child doesn't love that animal. Okay? And she stayed in love with bunnies. You know, she still loves bunnies. But you know, all because of that improper you know, action. So handling is, a, is just a major issue with them. So okay, there should be somebody out there you recognize. <laughs> That's nice, she just saw it. Okay. So, you know, holding and supporting them. This is a really, really big issue. Okay. And when we're talking, in fact, I'm going to get up here with this because this is where I'm going to brought uh, Oscar along. And normally I'm doing this actually with, like I said, with a live bunny, showing people how to, you know, I want to have them, yeah, you know, this is where it's really tough talking with this thing. I want them facing me. Okay. If they're facing away from you, you're the predator. You're after them. Okay? They should be facing you. You know, again, you're approaching them, you're petting, and you know, all of the different things that, you know, that they really like. They like those nose rubs. They like full face rubs. Between the eyes and the ears, that's a really good spot. Cheek rubs. Ooh, how long have you had your butt? Ooh, you know, leaning into your hand. Okay. Ear rubs. They really, because guess what? Their bum mates grow in their ears, right? They love gentle ear rubs. It's a good way of sticking your finger down there gently, too, and see if there's an ear infection going on. Because if they're going, ah, you know, okay, there's a problem. Most of them are like, oh, yeah, 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 okay. You can get back here behind the scruff. If you start it up here, if you start here, okay, you're a predator, because that's where they're grabbing them, okay? Same thing, you know, in fact, when I go and uh, I'm doing it with, you know, with, with Bianca, and I start up here and I run back here, everything's fine. Then I lift my hand and touch your butt. Ah! Okay, every single time. Because all of a sudden, again, I become a predator. Yeah. So all of the things that you're doing to keep that bunny you know, comfortable, then when you're picking up, again, uh, you see, you know, you know she's, uh, Debbie's got one way of holding that bunny, but you're completely supporting that bunny's back and spine, which is, you know, again, keeping them comfortable. They aren't happy about being held, most of them. You know, there's always a few exceptions, but most of them hate being picked up, you know, and they hate being held. So making them as comfortable as possible while you're doing it is one way. You know, most of the time I have bunnies, you know, facing me and again completely supporting them. And in fact Bianca is she, she hates being picked up. So I only get about five seconds to demonstrate each thing to an adopter. But demonstrating them really, really helps because how many times have you had somebody, I have a hard time picking up my bunny, or I have a hard time, you know, doing this, or a hard time getting them to the vet. You know, so helping them learn how to handle their bunny is a really big thing. So, a lot of them like being held with their head tucked underneath the arm, okay? You're still supporting that rabbit, and everybody see? Um, you're still supporting that rabbit completely. But this way, they're not quite as frightened. Some of them, you know, simply prefer having that. You get a, you get a few who will allow you to hold them on their back. Okay? And I usually am using both hands uh, because you're completely supporting that rabbit's spine. And I tell people, keep the head elevated. Think of it like a baby. 
okay? You're wanting to support that head, you know. And people go, what about the transing? Well, there have actually been some studies done that show that the blood, the cortisol levels in the blood elevate whenever a rabbit is tranced. So that kind of indicates it might not be a very good thing to do, okay? So I always prefer to keep that bunny's head elevated. And then when I, if I do have them on their back, I really control that rollover so they're not harming themselves. And putting down the bunny backwards. Okay? When you put that bunny down forwards, what's their instinct? They launch, they can land wrong, hurt themselves. You can get raped really badly with those back feet. Okay? By putting them down backwards, uh, they can't see where they're going. Your body's blocking any forward motion, and you get a nice, safe touchdown. And the less stress your bunny has about each time that happens, the easier it's going to be. Okay. So I have to de de demonstrate, you know, don't pick them up by the rib, ca rib cage because now that bunny is dangling and you've got, you know, the, the um, spine can hyperextend and they can break that back. So you're always, always supporting that spine and I said keep that curved arch, you know, to that body. Okay, pay attention to their body language. They're going to be telling you, and these are all things that you know. You already know. You see that. If that rabbit is ready to launch at you, you know what, the, what an angry rabbit looks like. All of you. Go to the next one. Okay. Okay. All right, so consider these factors. You know, uh, all of these things can make this rabbit very, very uncomfortable and, again, very aggressive. If they're scared or they're unhappy, you know, and so, you know, do we tell people, you know, uh, talk about um, you know, barriers to adoption. Yeah, uh, I'll tell you one like a little quick story here. Because we had uh, some years back a lady come to us and uh, she wanted you know, a bunny and of course she, she's a teacher and she wants to take a bunny to school with her. And my first thought is, oh this is terrible. You know? And there had been some that's like their thought process was not correct. It was just a classroom pet. But this particular lady, though, this was her bunny. This was going to be her beloved pet, and she had lost a bunny. And she only took the bunny to school with her on good days, you know, nice days outside, nothing where they might get trapped to school, never left their own weekends or anything like this. So this truly was her beloved pet. And I did visit her classroom. And it was the most amazing thing because the kids were riveted on her, and she never even raised her voice. All she'd have to do is say, you know, in fact, um, you know, I was really impressed. And she said, well, yeah, she goes, except that maybe I taught the kids too well because one day the principal came into the room and said, good morning, everybody. And the kids all went, shh. <laughs> okay. You're going to scare the money. Okay. So and, you know, all of these things, so you can get some really good you know, uh, people out there who really do try to you know, take really good care of their you know, things. But you know, is that money too close to, a, you know, I don't like being close to a loudspeaker, okay? Uh, you know, and of course, you know, out there in that hutch, you know, you know, doing things, you know, where they're, you know, carrying it around. Some bunnies are very social. I've seen bunnies that didn't, where it didn't really uh, seem to affect them. But I've had other bunnies that, that you could tell just by their body language, they weren't happy with the situation they, they were in. So, okay, there's changes in the rabbit's behavior. Why, okay? This is where you really have to put on your hat because now you're talking to people and you're trying to figure out what's going on with that bunny. Okay. All right, this is one of my favorite topics here. You know, and I don't object to a water bottle as a second source of water, but I really, really hate it as a first source of water. Think about it if you've ever gotten sick and you've been dehydrated, how do you feel? You feel lousy, okay? And you know, those, there are, first thing I tell people when I hold up a water bottle, there are no water bottles in nature. Nowhere, okay? And then you get this, you know, the fact that you've got this, uh, if, you are, you know, if you are thirsty, what's the first thing you want to do? You get a glass of water, you know, so you don't want to go to the sink, turn it on in a drip and stick your tongue under it. No, I said, maybe you want to turn the faucet on full force, but you at least want a lot of water, okay? This is one stinking drop of water at a time. We feed our bunnies dry pelleted food, dry hay, and we condemn them to one drop of water at a time. And then if it's not hung correctly, think about those bunnies that are trying to stand on their tiptoes trying to get that water, or maybe they've got their heads cocked down like this trying to get that drop on that water, and it's still one drop of water at a time. 
Not too much, and you're listening to clappity, 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 okay? And, you know, and it gets very annoying. So, you know, and I had one lady go, oh, you know, my rabbit, she, she shakes that spigot, you know? And I go, yeah, she's frustrated. She knows there's water in there, but she can't get it out except for one drop of water at a time. Maybe if she shakes it hard enough, she gets two drops before that ball drops back in place. And there's one out there, a version that's got a, a metal, uh, it's like a little uh, metal piece there. Instead of having a ball there, they've got a tongue that, you know, uh, wire aside. How long do you think it's going to take before that tongue is so sore, they can't do it anymore? And then again, not you've lost water. But these are things that are out at the pet store. And again, when people are getting things, what do they see at the pet store when they go into the small animal section? I have never, never seen a water bowl in a rabbit section, okay? You have to go to the dog section. And same thing, you know, when you go into the small pet section, do you see really, really big cages for bunnies? No, you see bunny cages, you know, uh, or stuff for the outside or the hutch and so forth. So a lot of, again, people see these things and they think they're okay. So these people are not getting stuff because they're trying to be cruel. It's because this is what they're seeing and thinking it's okay. So you're needing to change that because, again, if that bunny's dehydrated and it's crabby or it's getting weak and it doesn't want attention, this might be a case behind it. Okay. So heavy crockery water bowls, I've seen attached water bowls but something that the bunny can't toss because basically what happens when you tell people to use a bowl? Well, they toss it or they turn it over. Well, yeah, if you give them this little stupid plastic bowl because what happens? Bunnies like toys. If you don't give them a toy, they're gonna make a toy. And they don't care if there's water or food in it. If they can toss that toy, it's gone. It's a play, yeah, it's a frisbee. So, you know, we need to have something heavy that they can't turn over. Uh, they estimate that a five pound rabbit drinks as much water as a 20 pound dog. It's a lot of water, okay? I've got an 11 pound bunny in our education room. I said, That's, that bunny needs as much water as a 44 pound dog. That's a lot of water. You know, well, and then, so, and help them out. You know, there's, you can uh, give them ideas, you know, for bowls. One of the things I give them an idea for a heavy crockery bowl is a um, casserole dish. How many of you have seen big, heavy crockery casserole dishes? Yeah, grandma's covered, yeah. Cheap, okay, Goodwill, garage sale. You don't have to go out and buy a $24, you know, dog bowl or more, because I've seen some of these things get really pricey. Uh, you know, just something that's, that's good enough for you know, the bunny to have, you know, a good supply of water and that they can't knock over easily. Okay, diet. Okay, um, I've actually seen bunnies who actually have gone just like they've been on a caffeine high from a diet that is too rich or too, got all these seeds, nuts, corn, you know, starchy pieces, you know, dried fruit, all of this kind of thing. Um, it really came home to me one day when I had an adopter who said, you know, the money that we got from you was doing absolutely great. Now she's become aggressive, she's chasing her bond mate, she's nipping at the kids, she's racing all over the place. And I'm just like, this was a very, very calm, sweet bunny. And I'm like, what has happened here? So I actually went and visited the home. They had a beautiful neat idea cage. It was literally five across, three deep, four levels high. So the bunny had plenty of exercise even when the bunny was not running out loose. And everything was, everything I questioned was perfect, 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 perfect. And then I saw this little paper bag sitting on the mantel. I said, what is this? Well, that's your food. And where did you get it? Oh, from the pets. I mean, from the uh, feed store. Yeah. And I said, well, we you know we remembered you telling us that you know feed goes you know pelleted food can go stale in about 30 days. So we didn't want to get the 50 pound bag. So they sell it in these little paper bags. Okay. So now you basically have some very high protein, high fat content breeder food that's also going to go stale in this little paper bag. Yeah. And, you know, and this poor little bunny, like I said, was basically on a caffeine high type of thing. It was just going nuts from the diet. As soon as they put her back on the type of diet that we recommended, bunny's behavior went right back to normal. Okay, your stressful environment. Again, if the, if the environment is stressful, they're going to be stressed and they're not going to be very happy about being approached or being handled or anything else of that nature. Okay. Uh, aggression can be caused by, you know, pain. So there again, like I said, if they're normally, you know, uh, 
good, you know, everything's quiet and calm for them normally, and now all of a sudden that behavior has changed, what's the problem? Sometimes it can be, you know, I said, you check, you know, check the ears. When you reach for him, does he flinch? Or does he snap at you? you know, uh, when you touch his face, maybe you've got a molar spur. Okay, so one of the first things you're trying to do is eliminate you know, that with a veterinary checkup to make sure that you know, you've got those particular issues, you know, because that's it. And it's something that could be uh, econiculi with, uh, say, the legs going, you know, having a problem uh, working, arthritis, uh, it's an ear infection, a molar spur, any of those things that can be having a problem is he all of a sudden maybe he's developing a cataract and now he doesn't want to be approached from this side. Okay, so take a look at all of those things, even parasites, okay, uh, particularly some of the other ear infections. But I see buddies when they've had intestinal parasites not feeling very well. Uh, an external parasite can cause you know, infection and so forth. We had one little buddy, she actually had 14 cuterebra in her. So, um, skin conditions, you know, if you're not paying attention, you know, does that buddy have urine skull? Does that buddy have fermites? You know, uh, this particular one up there, that's a molar abscess. You know, ugh, okay. So all of these things, again, just trying to eliminate all of those possibilities for causing that you know, aggression if this buddy wasn't aggressive before. Okay. Internal pain, again, sometimes you can't see things. I always tell people, if you take that bunny to the vet and it's not their teeth that's causing a problem and they palpate that abdomen, you have to do x-rays. You cannot expect that vet to guess what's going on inside that body, okay? So be prepared for that. And in this particular case, this was a bladder stone, you know, um, sat the size of the bladder and the bunny had quit eating and was, didn't want to be touched, didn't want to be picked up. Uh, I think he was seven years old at the time of the surgery to remove that. He's 14 now. So, you know, and he turned went right back to being his old normal self as soon as that was removed. Uh, you know, gas. I mean, you don't want to be anybody touching you or messing around with you if you've got a really bad case of gas. And the same way are going to be the bunnies. We see that. So again, this can be a cause of aggression. Do not touch me. I hurt. Okay. The molar spurs, I don't know if you can see that particular molar spur there. But a lot of times visuals uh, with your uh, doctors again, if you can show them what things are like, they're a little more likely to go, oh, now I understand why that bunny, you know, is crabby or doesn't want me to touch the side of his face, or needs to have that molar spur taken out. Okay, so, <laughs> so now you've got your answer your place, you have one come in, and it is aggressive, okay. Now what do you do? Okay, so. <laughs> You know, I mean, you know, was, we've all had some of these guys come in. Cute little Holland Bob. We had one, you know, it would take your arm off at the elbow if it could chew it. Okay. So now you know you are going to be in for the, you know, you have to be patient and you do have to be in it for the long haul. If you're going to bring that rabbit around, it's going to take time. And sometimes you're trying to figure out, you know, what the issue is. But if it is a behavior that you're stuck with now and you're trying to deal with it, okay. These are the things that you're going to be looking at. Okay. So you're really trying to set up for success. That's part of it. Okay. A lot of rabbits, they like to meet face to face. That's what they do with other rabbits. So sometimes it's a lot easier if they're dealing with your face and not your hand or bending over them like a predator. So a lot of times you can set up you know, a cage at that type of level. Uh, doesn't mean that you really are trying to get your face in there for the bunny to bite your nose, because I've you know, seen that happen. But the idea is that you're, you're there, and that's they're dealing with you in a way they can understand and think like a bunny. So, you know, when you're kind of approaching from above, you know, they can see that hand coming in, uh, they're fearful, you know, these are all just normal pettings. But now we're like said, talking about that aggressive bunny. Okay. So sometimes you have to remove an item from the body, from the rabbit that may construe it as territory, such as a hiding box. When you're dealing with it, uh, you know, and I've got you know, pictures of here. I had one that looks like, you ever had one that was like a moray eel? Yeah, they're in that box. You go to reach in there just to get the food bowl. Wham! Okay, <laughs> it's after you. So, you know, the best thing you can do is, you know, is remove that box while you're you know, dealing with that issue or separating the rabbit, you know, putting some, a barrier in there so that they can't, uh, you know, go after you while you're doing something. 
days next to the food bowls. If you've had a bunny that was starved and not given you know, food on a regular basis, they can really, really feel territory about those food bowls sometimes. So again, there you, you may want to make sure that the bunny is out playing around when you're doing something. Um, you know, if they're really territorial about their house. Um, I've had bunnies that would binky when they went to back to a clean house. I've also had bunnies who were totally ticked because you touched their things, okay? And then they're busy making everything back the way they were. But the bit better, but you're, you know, if you're trying to do that while they're in there, have you ever tried to uh, take a whisk room or something and clean out a cage while the bunny's in the room, in that cage? Yeah, okay. So, it has a bunny elsewhere. Don't, you know, create problems of your own and don't, you know, and keep them going. So, uh, note whether the rabbit is cower on the floor, mid-level, or face height. You know, so they might like it here. But we've had bunnies that were terrified that high off the floor. Then we have bunnies that, you know, were great in a pen. They were much happier feeling in an open situation, like they had a little more control of things. And then other bunnies that, you know, like a coffee table height. You know, again, they just, there's just different things, you know, and so the bunny at the coffee table height might feel like it's in its warren. You've got the one that's the face-to-face, -face, and it's like, oh, I feel more comfortable this way because it's not hands all the time. Uh, or the bunny that feels like I can, I've got more freedom to run away if I'm in a pen. And a lot of times that is part of what you're doing. Okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry, that, the last part. Raising your hand near the cage and lowering it multiple times, a lot of times really helps that bunny learn that your hand is not going to do something. Okay. A lot of these bunnies, they may have been hit, they may have been grabbed, snatched, uh, you know, had things thrown at them. Hands don't mean something good to them. So when that's the case, showing them your hand lots and lots of times without ever touching them, without doing anything, is raising it. A lot of times, even just like if I bring a pet, hold my hand back. You know, all of a sudden it's like, okay, okay, so she's not doing anything, okay, it's not so bad. You know, and then you're getting you know, closer and closer. Okay. Uh, watching. Are there particular things that trigger that aggression? And we mentioned the food bowls, uh, even touching their toys. You know. Are you harboring an unwanted smell? You know, okay. We had a lady who, oh my gosh, she goes, my bunny she just bites me, bites me, bites me. Well, when she came in, yeah, because it's like, bring your bunny in, come in, we can talk. Uh, I couldn't stand the perfume. Okay. I'm afraid you never tend that poor lady she's reaching in and that bunny's like, ah, oh, no. Okay, 100 million receptors in that nose. Uh, another rabbit. I have another you know, lady who had a doctor from us and her first bunny was very, very bonded with her and after she you know, adopted the second bunny, she learned very quickly that she either had to take care of her first bunny first and then go take care of the other bunny because they weren't bonded or, because she also helped at, uh, at our shelter, she would, you know, go home after taking care of all the bunnies at the shelter or helping there, she would shower and change clothes before dealing with her bunny. Now, whether it was her bunny was jealous or whether it was just the smell of another strange bunny, you know, by her territory, doesn't matter. The fact is, the smell of another rabbit triggered that aggressive behavior. Okay, so now she had to do something to, that would avoid triggering that you know, aggressive behavior. Um, putting, you know, I've done this a lot, and with uh, just little pieces of uh, dried, you know, rolled oats on top of their food. They're all excited, they want their dish, they want their food, and they love rolled oats, okay? We're not talking about giving them so much that we're making them sick. We're talking about, you know, like a teaspoon amount size. But they want that. And a lot of times they don't want to leave that dish. And they will stay there. They don't want you touching them. And they'll even flinch. But maybe you just do one little stroke. And the next day, maybe you're doing two little strokes. If they run away, you wait. They come back. You might even just get your hand close to them and pull your hand away. Until day after day after day, sooner or later, they're letting you pet. Because that hand doesn't mean something aggressive. And they got something good. They're really enjoying their oats, and they're getting groomed at the same time. Um, okay. And I bring this up because we did have this happen once, and because almost everybody wants to think, you know, it is a, a behavioral or a responsorial type of behavior aggression. We did have it happen once where I said, 
it was not a responsorial position. It was something definitely, um, you know, whether it was hereditary or it was disease, uh, the lady did not end up having any necropsy done, and I really, really wish that, we, that would have been the case. But she had a pair of brothers, and the one brother started attacking a brick wall. First, it became, became aggressive with the people in the house. Ultimately, I said it started when it was like after exercise, it would attack the walls. Okay, that's not normal behavior. Okay? Uh, the other, you know, then that bunny, you know, passed. And six months later, the brother started exhibiting the same erratic behavior. It would literally leap to the top of its cage, hang on with its teeth, and shake and hang. You know, uh, this again is not normal behavior. So you know, there's times when you know, say, okay, maybe you can't do something about it, but there is a difference. You know, you've been working with money, so you can recognize the difference between an abnormal behavior and something that might be caused by fear um, or you know, poor behavior. You know, in the past, uh, you know, um, just trying to let's see, um, lack of food. We had another bunny that his whole life he was very aggressive with food, and he was adopted into a wonderful home. And all they did was make sure he was out for playtime, put his food in, and then let him come back. And he, because he came in in really, really bad shape from, uh, from lack of food, you know. Okay, uh, a few case studies here. Yeah. Uh, this is Adelaide, okay. And uh, Adelaide came in when she was about six months old from a big confiscation. And the lady who had them, she had actually been witnessed grabbing them by the scruff. And I have to put the microphone down from here for a second. Hanging by the scruff, and then while the rabbit is struggling, going, don't you better kick at me, don't you better kick at me. Okay. Now, how do you think that rabbit's response is to hands coming near it? Okay. So, and I uh, said, so we first thought she was a mini lop. Well, it turned out she was a young French lop. She, was, she ended up very churning out at about 14 pounds with grown men afraid of her. Okay. Because she went for them, and she meant business. And, but, you know, so we actually figured, okay, this is going to be a sanctuary rabbit. Yeah. But as time went by, and all of the you know, people that helped, you know, with, with, the, with the rabbits at our place, she got to where, like, no hands are hurting me. I get fed every day. I get played with, you know. And all of these things, all of a sudden, she just turned around. Now, it did take over a year. But by the time that year passed, we could take her actually to a classroom with grade school kids, kindergartners, and she'd be like, pet me, pet me, yeah. We took her to an event at uh, the University of Missouri, uh, and they have, an, their veterinary students have an open house, and people come in to learn about, you know, all these different things, and they come in and they go visit the, us with the rabbits. The, the university actually has us come to talk to people about rabbits. So we set up kind of like a mini education area, and we had her in a pen, and so she had her litter box, her bowls, because we're trying to actually educate people. This is, you know, good ways of, of having them. And she also had her big cardboard box, because this is a pretty stressful situation. Probably several hundred people will come through during a day, and, you know, we want them to be able to feel like they can still go hide if they need to. Well, no, not her. She'd go, oh, people coming in. She'd jump up on top of that cardboard box so that people could pet her, so she could, all the kids could reach her. And if there was a little lull, she'd jump down, she'd go use her good box, get some food, get some water, get them come back in, right back up top that box. Here I am. Okay. Never once did she go into hiding. Well, at the end of the day, you know, it was time we were cleaning up and starting to put stuff away, and we were in a, like a medical education room. And then one of the students said, well, why don't you just let her run around while you're, you know, packing up? Oh, okay, if you don't mind, that's fine. So we opened up the pen, and she, oh, so she ran all over that room while we were packing up. And now, you have to fast forward, a full year later, we took her again the next year. And, you know, went through the whole routine, she's letting kids pet her, et cetera. At the end of the day, we start packing up. And she's like, well, if you're packing up, I should get to run around. <laughs> Jumped off that box, pushed open the pen, and started running around the room. Now you gotta figure, think about this, this is how good their memories are. She'd only done it once, and she not only recognized that, you know, where she was at, 
But what she recognized the fact that we were cleaning up for the day and that she had gotten to run around that time one time. And you know, so it's like, well, then I should be allowed to do this again. So all these these rabbits have extraordinarily good memories. So everything you do is going to be remembered. Okay. Uh, this little one I'm gonna spend too much time on her. Uh, she came in also very aggressive. We did the same routine. She hid in her box, you know, and she was one of these little more eels. So again, just slowly, slowly, slowly. We spent a lot of time just talking, just every day talking, and you know, in a little bit of you know, like face to face height. And then when she would come over, it was like, okay, same, just a little bit of approach, a little bit of approach, a little bit of approach, you know, until she would actually stay there unless just a little bit of a touch, just a little two finger touch, until the night where she was like, oh, I really like this, oh, this is good, okay, you know, and, uh, and she was adopted. Okay, Prudence, well, this is another little one. She came in really, really, really aggressive. She, she reminded me of the, one of those bunnies with teeth because all you had to do was go near her and she was ready to bite. And so it, it kind of did this a little bit because she really wasn't responding well to coming out of the box and you know the things that we had normally done. So this is actually our front desk. I spent a lot of time over there working on the computer and I would just let her run the front desk. Put a litter box on there. And so here my hands are moving, but I'm, not, I'm totally ignoring her until pretty slides what are you doing? Okay. You know, now, if she came up, no, like, she's nudging my hand, my hand's on the mouse. It's like, I just stop. I'm not doing anything. I'm not being aggressive. It's, oh, okay, your hand's not hurting me. It's not bothering me. By the time, you know, we spent two, three months doing this, she would actually come lay on that mouse because, no, 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 you pay attention to me, not the mouse, okay? Mouse doesn't get any attention. So, Okay, and this little one, this is uh, actually uh, you know, little Grover. And he, again, this was the one that would like to take your you know, arm off up to the elbow. And was really, really aggressive. So he, we did, we would take the box out and we would you know, talk to him. And every day, same thing, talk, 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 you know, until finally it was like, okay. And he would start coming over, being curious. Now, he would, like I said, the, the door opened, he was ready to be extremely aggressive. So we didn't try, you know, opening the door or any face-to-face -face just at that point. And the bars to him actually meant security. So again, sometimes you're, you're trying to figure out all of these different things. So the bars meant security to him. And I would simply hold my hand up towards the bars. A little bit of time, yeah. And okay, nothing's happening. Well, then I was able, and, and I, you know, and this is one of these things here. I tell all the people coming through our shelter, do not reach through the bars because they can't see right here. What happens when you touch them? Ah, you know, because they can't see. So yeah, here I'm breaking my own rules, you know, but he's there, he's recognizing that I'm there, take the flat of my hand and then just one touch. You know? So, and then pretty soon was like, oh, that's kind of nice. You know? And I was able to start petting him through the bars. And then it progressed to the point where when, as soon as he knew I was coming by, the face was pressed through the bars. Here, pet me, pet me, okay? So we spent some time doing that. Then I started opening the door. Oh, now we're gonna go hide, okay? And I would just stand there and talk by the open door. And pretty soon, we'd get this little peeking around and just very gradually, he would start letting me pet through the open door, okay? We progressed to then, oh, okay, now I get, oh, yeah, with the door open, I get a full head rub. Okay, this is nice. Okay, oh, oh now I get some head scratches, I get some ear rubs, you know. Okay, now we're getting to the full body. Okay, and again, all still within his comfort level. That cage still meant a safe spot to him. So at this point, we're still doing everything within that cage where he feels comfortable. And that was the last thing we finally, when he finally was like, here's my head. And literally, you could walk up to them, open that door, he'd run over and you're right on the end, he's just having himself out. So all of these things, again, it took a long time, it took several months 
um, to try and you know, to finally get to this point. But he was a much, much happier bunny you know, at this point. Okay, so a little thing here. Sometimes it is going to be you and not them. Uh, we can't know everything that's going on in their background. Okay, so you could look like, sound like, or smell like something bad in their past. Right? Uh, you know, and you can't change that about you. You can't change your smell. You can't change your sound. You can't change your shape. Yeah. So don't stress that bunny out. Okay. If it takes somebody else to work with that bunny. Let that happen. We have seen this, I can't tell you, countless times where a bunny did not respond to one person, but they responded to somebody else. Okay? And you're watching those things, you know, little behaviors. We had one bunny that we discovered she hated teenage girls. So something must have happened in her past, because literally if a teenage girl would walk past her cage, she would lunge at that cage for that person. That's how bad she was about it. So obviously she got adopted out into an adult home, okay, where there was no chance of teenagers coming around her. Yeah. And it's just a matter of like a little bit of black, you know, that. But uh, we had uh, at one point in time, uh, two ladies that uh, was working with me in the evening, you know, we had three bunnies. One hated me, one hated Pat, one hated Bobby. And so we normally do things like, you know, one of us did all the water, one of us did all the hay, one of us did all the food. But with those three bunnies, one person took care of everything. That bunny did not object to this person, that bunny. So again, you do not stress them out, okay? It, it's not you, you know, I mean, it's, it, it is you, but it's not because you're a horrible person or anything. It's just there's something that, you know, you can't change about that, okay? And it's just like not everybody's going to be your best friend either, you know, person a very nice person, but they're not your best friend. So if that bunny really, really needs to have somebody else don't let ego come into play here. Yeah. Well, I've been doing bunnies for 20 years. I should be able to. No, give it up, OK? Don't take it personally. Let that bunny have somebody else to, to respond to. Okay. Um, oh, and this is, y'all. One, one other little story here. So before we go to right here to y'all, so finally to the end. And I think I managed to finish up a little bit early. So hopefully we're getting uh, ahead, of, ahead of time. Um, when I talk to adopters, I also tell people it's it's not just you picking out the bunny. The bunny needs to you know pick you out. Okay, it needs to be a mutual chemistry. You know, and as the bunny actually has as much say so as you. And the the best story I had you know that I tell people about was like, it was actually very embarrassing for me. Some of you may have heard the the same story at the last uh, conference, but I had a mom, dad, and their 13 year old son come in. Very nice family go through the orientation, and they've never had a bunny before, so they get the full orientation. And it is a lot of information, and so we tell people, you know, because I tell people, I'm going to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly, okay? Um, you know, and so that you can decide. I can't know what your circumstances are. You, only you know. So I'm giving you the information, and you decide whether this is the right pet for you. If it is, we want to move forward, okay? So, yes, you know, but we like to give them a chance to talk about it. Because a lot of times, you know, mom and dad want to go home and talk about this, especially if this was little Susie's, you know, pet, and they wanted to put it in her room on her dresser, and now this is not what they thought. You know, sometimes those people don't end up adopting, and that's okay. But, you know, if they're, you know, they're really wanting to, and it's like, yeah, you know, we think this is really a, a good, you know, pet for us. So these people came back in, and they said, yes, we, we really want to have a bunny. Great, okay, so let's look at bunnies. And they go back and they go, oh, can we see this little guy? He's really cute. I said, oh, he's wonderful. He's got a very outgoing personality. He's got beautiful litter box habits. And so we get him out and we have a you know, couch for meet and greet so people can actually interact. They sit down, okay. I sit the bunny down on the couch. Their son sits down next to him. The rabbit takes one look at the kid, turns around and hoses him. <laughs> The kid's dripping. <laughs> Mom and dad are absolutely horrified. Okay? I want to crawl under something, I'm so embarrassed. Okay? And but the kid looks at me and goes, he doesn't like me, does he? <laughs> He's like, oh, no, I don't know what's wrong with him. He doesn't know. Put him away. It was fall. The kid had on a hoodie. Thank goodness he had something he could take off. Okay? 
takes off and goes, can I still look around? Oh yeah, I mean, wasn't, there was nothing wrong with this kid. It was very nice, you know, young man. And uh, so he's walking around. At the same time in the shelter, we had a little bunny who was aloof with everybody. You know, she would accept Penny, but wasn't really interested. She talked to the paw. <laughs> Guy goes by, she is literally hanging on the door, trying to get this kid's attention. He's trying to put her through the bars. He goes, can I look at this one? I'm like, uh, uh, yeah, I guess so. You know, I get her out, set her on the couch. She's all over him, in his lap, up on his shoulder. You know, Mom and Dad sit down, she's all over them. You know, and they're going, yeah, we want this one. And it's like, this is great. I mean, the rest of us were chopped liver because we never got that reaction out of it. <laughs> but the point was, she liked them. They liked her. They've come in to our shelter for supplies and said, she follows us around the house. She sits on the couch and watches TV with us. It was the right match. And those are the things that you're looking for. So, you know, when those bunnies, you know, have these different behaviors, you know, you're going with it. But it's all up to you to end up trying to deal with, like I said, prevention, doing things all the right way, getting your adopters to do things the right way. And when I tell people, you know, the orientation is a little bit long if you haven't had a bunny, it's not because we're really trying to, like, you don't know what you're doing. We're trying to explain the whys behind everything, okay? You know, it's one thing that if you could give somebody a sheet and say, okay, here, do this, 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 and this, and you can do that. Yeah, they can go on the internet and they can find out how to do this, this, and this. But when you can explain why you recommend a water bowl, why you recommend certain types of foods, why they need 80% diet, you know, hay in their diet, you know, you're explaining the whys, then they're understanding, and there's a really much better chance that they will go home and do those things for their bunnies, because now they understand the importance of them. Okay? That's, you know, like I said, that's one of the real big things why you know, like so we do the orientations. You know, um, you know, I love the last presentation, and one of the things I want to bring up since we're a little bit ahead of time, um, because you know, Ann's done it with there. We had a, you know, recently had gone to a, another one of these uh, open adoption uh, seminars, and the same thoughts, it's like, well, no, no, this is this is not good, this is not good, this is good. And then as we actually listened to the you know, speaker, it's like. Well, we're already doing that. Well, we're doing that. Well, we do that now. And it's like, you know, so some of the things, again, there's ways to do things. Um, the pets as presents or as gifts, there's some ways, some real easy ways to handle this situation. You know, so, um, and as far as, you know, the, the, uh, as you mentioned, the apartments, etc. On our adoption form, it asks, do you own a home? Or do you rent? And it says, if you rent, does your landlord allow rabbits? If they say yes, that's it. We never go any further than that. Okay? Some of you may do the same way. You accept their answer. Yeah. And a lot of it, you know, there is you know, a, a trust that you can build up. And when you're, with, so they're a lot more likely to also listen to some of the information that you have. When we tell them, you know, some of the information we're requesting isn't about their income. We don't check with your veterinarian to see if they've had their dog inoculated. Um, you know, and again, depending on the circumstances, you know, we've had uh, somewhere we actually did say we really want your bunny to be fixed before you know, we get our bunny in there. And there are there's some very specific reasons why. We've also had this case where you know, the person had a 12-year-old bunny and it wasn't fixed. Well, we weren't going to make them go get that bunny fixed because they weren't going to be doing bond mates. And they obviously had been taking good care of this bunny. It wouldn't have been 12 years old. And as we talked to them, you know, they had been taking you know, good care of this, and they really wanted to get another bunny in. So lots of things that, that you can do. And if you want to, you know, check with some of them, yeah. I know Anne will talk to you until, you know, you, you're ready to fall asleep because of all the things that, that she's been doing there. You know, if you want to talk to any of us or any of you that, you know, had, do some of these things, you know, let everybody know because it's really a great way of, you know, enhancing some of those adoptions. So anyway, um, so that there's one more slide in there. That might be, no, that's the last one. Okay. All right. So if you have any questions, let me know after the session. Right now, that just gives you a little bit bigger break. And thank you, and hopefully you enjoyed it.